Fence is something that was said. He was asking about you before it all started. Said his name was Tom Lincoln. Well, what did he want with me? Oh, I don't know. Daniel, when you look at this place, look at my table, chairs, everything busted. Well, we'll find out when he comes around. Well, I'll send him over to your cabin. Daniel, that boy of yours fell in the river. Israel? That's right. I thought I told you to get out of those wet things. Now, scoot. Our books aren't hurt now. Just a mite damp. That's fine, but the important thing is to get you dried. Is Israel all right? Yes, Paul. He was catching turtles and he fell in the river. And this young woman fished him out. Oh, no. I fell in and he pulled me out. I want a baby boy just like him. He's got more grit than a sandbar. I went under, and he audited in and swam out to save me. Now, that's the kind of baby boy I hanker for. You must be Daniel Boone. Uh, my husband, Miss Nancy Hanks. Howdy. Dan, what happened to your ear? It's been bleeding. Oh, it's nothing, just a little scuffle. Nothing. You sit down there. I'll get something to fix it with. Oh. Uh, Nancy Hanks. Where are you from, Miss Hanks? Elizabeth Town. Some folks call me Nancy Sparrow. 
because I live there with my aunt and uncle, Tom and Betsy Sparrow. Oh. They have a lilac bush by the front door. Let me have a look at that here. Where'd you have the fire? Um, since now this is tavern. Who hit you? Oh, some wild young buck by the name of Tom Lincoln. Then you must have riled him. <laughs> I reckon I did. He's a rip snorter when he's riled. Do you know him, Mr. Lincoln? He's a, a carpenter and a cooper. He made a sauerkraut barrel for my Aunt Betsy. Well, uh, what, what brings you here to Boonesboro, Miss Hanks? I come to find a job. I thought that maybe in a big place like Boonesboro, there might be a family that needs some help. What about the Nicholas Burnses? Maybe they could use her. You know, that just might be. They got a whole parcel of kids. The last count, I made out about eight. Ten. Soon be eleven. Mrs. Burns is in a family way. <laughs> so I noticed. Do you think they could afford to hire me, the Burnses? Oh, they're pretty rich. They got three horses, two cows, and a wagon. Oh, and they brought back a raft full of plunder. Pewter and copperware and all the pots and pans you can shake a stick at. Candle mold, two spinning wheels. Or well, did they bring along any books? I didn't see any. Well, that's too bad. Do you like books? Oh, they open up your eyes, in your mind. I want to read all I can so I can be ready for him when he opens up his eyes. Him? Who? My boy baby I was talking about. I can just close my eyes and see myself loving him and nursing him and raising him up against the sky and saying, here we come. Where from? But I know deep down inside me, wherever he comes from, that he will rise up into greatness. How do you know that? Well, I was walking in the woods, in a grove of wild crabapple trees, and they was in bloom. And I heard a voice above me, like it was in the blossoms. And it said, right out, clear as day, you will have a boy baby, and he will sit in high places. The voice of God? Oh, no. <laughs> it sounded more like my grandmother. <laughs> but it must have been most unsettling. But it is Miss Nancy, isn't it, uh, Miss? That's the trouble. I know who I want for my boy's father. But he wants somebody else. Well, maybe things will work out. Uh, Becky, could I have a little of that tea? <laughs> of course. Listen, we've got women in here. I don't want any trouble. I didn't come for no trouble. My name's Tom Lincoln. Are you any kin to Mordecai Lincoln? That's my brother. I knew your father, Captain Lincoln, before he was killed by the Indians. That's the only reason I'm here. Come on in. This is my wife, Rebecca, Mr. Lincoln. Miss Boone. Mr. Lincoln. Nancy Hanks. Mr. Lincoln. What are you doing in Boonesboro? I came to find a job. A hired girl? Well, it's better than poking my fist into other people's ears. I'll see you later, Boone, when you're not so fuddled up with damp females. Hold your horses. I was just about to leave. Where do these Burnses live? You can't go out like that. You gotta dry out first and print yourself up some. You look like a wet dog. Well, it's better than smelling like one. I'm obliged for the tea. All right, I'll go with you and get you acquainted with Mrs. Burns. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he who is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Proverbs. Where's 
I do for you, Mr. Lincoln? Do you believe in slavery? No, I don't, do you? Slavery's against God's law. And we're both on the same side. But did you come over here to discuss slavery? Well, no. I come for some advice. What about? Well, I've had a job lately hewing out timbers for a new sawmill, Danton Gahegan's building down on Squirrel Creek. A couple of days ago, he bought two slaves and put them to helping me. It must have been the two that came through here the other day with that fat slave trader. That's them. Well, what did you do? I quit. If I work alongside of slaves, it'd be the same as saying I believed in slavery, wouldn't it? Could be taken that way. It sure could. But now here's the rub. Now Gehegan won't pay me for the three months' work I already put in. So what should I do? Why are you asking me? Who should I ask? You're the head man here, ain't you? This, this place is named after you, ain't it? I reckon it is. Well, so there ain't nobody else to ask. Well, I reckon your only way out is to sue. Well, now, how do I do that? Well, you know the man down at the tavern, Cincinnatus? Uh, yeah. Well, he's a justice of the peace. Go see him. And that's the best you've got to offer. That's it, unless he sues you back for busting up his furniture. I've already agreed to mend his furniture, and when I'm through, it'll be better than what he had in the first place. And that's more than I can say for Kentucky. Now, what's wrong with Kentucky? Look at the mess it's in. A man can't collect what's owed him. If it's an honest debt, he'll collect it. You bet I will. Thanks for nothing. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean, honest debt? You casting doubts on my honesty? I said the court will decide it. Well, I'm casting doubts on yours. Now, you just wait just a minute. That wasn't no honest punch that flattened me out. What was it? It was a lucky punch. Fixing those other chairs, you can fix my wife's too. If you can. What happened to my chair? He sat on it too hard. Good day, Mr. Lincoln. What was that about? Take a look in my ear. Not again. Oh, I'm sorry for Nancy's sake. What's Nancy got to do with this? Tom Lincoln is the one Nancy wants for the father of her boy baby. Coming here to Boonesboro for a job was just an excuse to follow him. Well, did she get the job? Yes, they were glad to get her. Now, just a minute. Did she say she followed him here? Oh, of course not. But didn't you see the way her eyes lit up when you first mentioned his name? No. And didn't you see how she defended him when she said you must have riled him? Yeah, I heard that. And did you see how she tied into him for fighting? Yeah, I heard that too, but I still got whomped in the air. Oh, you men can be so thick-headed about some things. They're in love. I'll bet a stack of feathers on it. Well, I'll wager that no baby boy of Tom Lincoln's will ever amount to much. Here, give me that. Cincinnatus? Where's Cincinnatus? Down the river. Went to serve a paper for me. For you? Why? I'm bringing suit against Den Gahegan. Worked for him for three months, and I won't pay him. Well, who's mine in the store? I am. Uh, I'd like a pound of sugar on the Burns account and a half a pound of black pepper. I'll weigh them out. How long are you going to be in Boonesboro? 
At least till I amend this furniture. You ain't getting paid for that either. No, I ain't. You're not getting ahead so fast, are you? I've been spoke to by Ezra Bean. He wants me to make him up some white oak barrels. He's starting a whiskey distillery. Then you'll be staying on a spell? Maybe. And maybe not. Some fella spoke to him, and he wants me to go buffalo hunting with him out on the prairies. Buffalo? Prairies? How do you like your job? Fine. Burns are kindly folk. What do you have to do? Oh, just chore around. Women's work. First thing in the morning, I milk. How many cows they got? Three, but only two is fresh. And then I get the babies up and make breakfast. Pancakes? Sometimes. Can you flip them? Uh, of course I can flip them. How high? High enough to turn them around. Clever woman could uh, flip them up a chimney and run outside and catch them coming down. Well, I ain't that. <laughs> You're joking me, ain't you? Fixing to get mad, wasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> This black pepper. What do you do after breakfast? <laughs> I make cheese and sew dotties and wash the babies. And then I make dinner and hoe the cabbages and round the cows in and milk them. Then on a Monday, I do the washing and on Tuesday, the ironing. This morning, I strained out a tub of wild honey. But that ain't every day. Mrs. Burns, she's so poorly that I had to put her to bed, too. But then I get to sit by the fire and read my storybook on my Bible. It's my favorite part of the day, reading a little. Reading? What's the matter with reading? Puts notions in your head. Well, a head should have some notions in it. Not the kind you got. Well, what kind should it have, like yours? If your head had some notions in it instead of all that wrath, you wouldn't be working here for nothing. Oh, Miss Nancy. Hello, Andrew. Pa told me to tell you. We got some books. Well, that's wonderful. What books? I don't know, but one of them's a fable book. Aesop's Fables? Yeah. Did you read it? No, I told you. I don't like books. Good boy. Could I borrow it? I reckon that's why Pa told me to tell you. Good. Then I'll amble over tonight and get it. You thank your Pa for me, Israel. Still at it, Mr. Lincoln? <laughs> well, when, when I get going, I'm, I'm too lazy to stop. <laughs> I see you were socializing with Nancy Hanks. That's nice. Yeah, in a way I was. We was uh, acquainted in Elizabethtown. She must get quite lonesome here. You never get lonesome when you're working. And she's busy as a horse's tail in fly time. <laughs> you know, she'll make somebody a fine wife. Why are you doing this, Mrs. Boone? Doing what? Trying to make a marriage twixt Nancy Hanks and me. Ain't that what you're up to? Yes, I am. I like Nancy Hanks. And I think she's gone on you. And I like you, and I think you're gone over her, too, whether you know it or not. Something's keeping you two apart. I don't see why I shouldn't try to find out what it is and bring you together. 
Mind you, I'm drawn to her. Huh? Even sparked her some. Took her to a Baptist camp meeting once. But then I drew back. Why? Who can put a reason on it? Did she say why she came here? To look for work. It ain't that. It was to follow me. Do you think that? Well, what else can I think? Sorry, she's upset. I want a different kind of woman. Got my eyes on one, too. As soon as I'm shut of these jobs here, I'm going to do something about her. Who is the lucky girl? You know uh, Christopher Bush in Elizabeth Town, the, the German fellow with all the sons? No. They're good boys. No back out in them. I never duck a fight when it's necessary, and nobody ever heard them holler enough. I take it they have a sister. Yep. She's the one. Name of Sari. Sarah. <laughs> she don't get me fired up the way Nancy does, but she's solid, like her brothers. Solid? Do you love her? I could if I took her to wife. That's no way to start. You have to... Well, I just hope you're making the right decision. Well, oh. excuse me, Mrs. Boone. Cincinnati's is back. Hello. Oh. Hey. You serve the soup paper on Dan Gahegan? Yes, I did. Yeah, did. Dog him all the way to Elizabeth Town to do it, but it served. Now I got one to serve you. Den Gahegan is countersuing you back. On what ground? Uh, he says the timbers you hewed out for him wasn't cut true and square. That's a lie. Well, if it is, it'll come out in the trial. Well, Becky, how you been? Fine. Things been pretty quiet. Well, he sure wasn't quiet in Elizabethtown. How was that? They had a big wedding. I tell you, there's more vittles than you ever seen in your life. I'm an old pies and cakes. Who got married? Well, Daniel Johnson, the new jailer over there, and you ought to seen him pour that liquor on. <laughs> It was corn whiskey here, there was West Indy rum, dandelion wine, and oh, I tell you, that was a big one. And if I got myself a big head, excuse me, Becky. Uh, who'd the jailer marry? Huh? The bride. Who was the bride? Oh, big strapping, yellow haired gal by the name of Sari. Uh, Sari, Sari Bush it was, you know. I gotta get in the tavern, if I can get my head through the door. White men at the stake. It's three that I know of. Well, when he was killed, did you peel off his hide and make your razor stomp out of it? I certainly did not. That made me as bad as he was. Who told you that? Foxy Graham. Well, Foxy Graham was stretching the truth like his old man does occasionally. Come around here and hold this for me. As a matter of fact, my razor stomp was made out of a piece of buffalo hide. I told you you wouldn't skin him. Well, thank you for sticking up for me. Can possums talk? I reckon they talk to one another. No, I mean talk English. Now, who told you that? Cincinnatus. I heard him gabbing to some men. He said that you're the best rifle shot in Kentucky. And even the possums know it. He said once, you treat a possum. You were just drawing a bead on it. And he yelled up, say your prayers, possum. This is Dan O'Boom down here. He yelled down, don't you, Dan? I'll come down. Well, that's a stretcher, son, but it's a better story. Nancy Hank says that books can make you laugh and cry, can they? Well, it makes some folks laugh and cry. Did you tell her we've got some books? I told her. She says books stick you way out yonder, do they? Well, the good ones do. Never took me way out yonder. Maybe I should try another one. Well, it wouldn't do you any harm. You haven't been doing too good in your learning. Maybe it'd help to read a few books. That's not the kind of learning I want. I want to learn how to kill bears and trap varmints like you do. Well, these old times are changing. Kentucky's not always going to be the dark and bloody ground. 
Pretty soon a man will have to be educated just to live here. I don't see what's wrong with being a trapper and a hunter. Oh, hi, Nancy. Good evening, Mr. Boone. Israel. Come to borrow a book? Yes, I have, thank you. Books ain't as plenty as wildcats in these parts. I come to borrow Aesop's fables. And I brung you, Robinson Crusoe. I know you like it. It's about the adventures of a man cast away on a desert island. Thank you. There you are, son. Read it. But tomorrow, it's bedtime. Night, Paul. Night, Nancy. Come on in, Nancy. Rebecca, Nancy Hanks is here. Nancy. Oh, Nancy, how nice to see you. Did you hear the news Cincinnati's brought back from Elizabethtown? No, ma'am. We was fixing to boil up some soap, and I was busy all day leeching out ashes and making lye. There was a big wedding over there. And guess who got married? Sari Bush and Daniel Johnson. Oh. Dear Sari Bush, I do believe you're crying. I thought it'd make you happy. Well, I'm sad for Tom. He was gone on Sari. No, he wasn't. He told me so. It, he did? Yes. He told me he thought she'd make a good wife, but he wasn't gone on her. Now, you stop that crying. Here's a book. Thank you. I'll take good care of her. I told Nancy about the wedding. Now she has a clear feel for Tom Lincoln. Oh, Tom Lincoln won't never marry me. He's got something against me. Well, what in the world has he got against you? Well, I don't know. He gets close and then he backs away. What do you think it is? Well, I don't know either, Nancy, unless... Well, maybe he doesn't like the idea of your following him over here. He may think it's a little too forward. Who says I followed him over here? Is that what he told you? Well, he sort of mentioned it. And you think that that's why Tom is so standoffish? Because he, he thinks that I'm too forward? Well, if he does, it's a mighty silly reason. Come in. Daniel, Tom Lincoln here has got a favor he'd like to ask of you. He wants you to go down to Squirrel Creek and uh, inspect some timbers that he hewed out for Dengahegan. Why? Well, so you can testify in a suit and a countersuit that them logs are cut true and honest. You want me to testify after the mess I got Kentucky in? That's the only reason I'm here. It's the least you can do. You've got a lot of brass. Now, Dan, don't go getting ringy. Just lamb down. If justice is going to be done, I've got to hear testimony from somebody I can trust, and I figured it might just as well be you. Well, thank you, Cincinnati. The only reason I might do it is because I liked his father. Well, much obliged. Well, wait, wait a minute. Which of you gentlemen is going to escort Miss Hanks home through the dark to the Burnses? Well, I'll be happy to take her. I rather thought you'd stay here and tell us more of the news of Elizabethtown. Oh, well, uh, in that case, uh, I'll be happy to stay. <laughs> I don't need nobody to walk me home. Good night. Oh. I'll walk you home. I'm, I was going that way anyhow. Oh, at least we got them together. <laughs> uh, that Lincoln, he's as honorary as a sore-toed bear. Just because he asked you a favor. No, because he keeps putting off that fine girl. Oh. Well, now, what's that for? Because I kind of like you. <laughs> You know, you're the, the only married couple I know who makes me regret being a bachelor. <laughs> Good night, Cincinnati. Uh, Good night, Daniel. Becky. <laughs> well, I'm obliged for your company. Wasn't nothing. You're as solemn as a papoose tonight. Not one of your stories. 
I want to say something. Nancy, my head ain't full of wrath. I get mad sometimes, sure. But I only fight when I get insulted. My man's got to fight then, or you'd be yellow as a harvest moon if he didn't. Uh, can't you get it through your head? I'll try, Tom. All right, then. Well, good night. Wait. I want to say something, too. I'm sorry about Sari Bush getting married to that new fella. Oh, I'll get over it. Now I'm going to have to go through all that sparking. That ain't the real reason I'm glad. Maybe Sari Bush wasn't a woman at the fireplace. My dream. Dream? I've been having a dream lately. My sleep. Same dream. Every night. About a woman? Yeah. I go up this little path. A strange cabin. Just like we've done here. Know what's inside. Bear skins on the bed, and seed corn hanging down from the rafters. I know there's a woman in there. That's when I get scared. But I force myself to push open the door and look in. There she is, sitting at the fireplace. Doing what? I don't know. That's what haunts me. Her back is always facing me. I know she's the woman I'm going to take to wife, but I can't see what she's doing or who she is. Poor Tom. You have to go in right away? Yes. I don't work all day on the Sabbath. After dinner, I usually go down by the river and sit on the bank. Get a hold of myself a little. Good night. And I remember, some of them are big and some small, but they all got my initials, TL cutting one in, and they're all cut square, straight, and true. So you told me. I'd be 48 of them and look out for some Gahegan might have had cut after I left. Now, that'll be enough instructions, Tom. I got something for you. About what? About Nancy Hanks. Suppose she did come here looking for a job. Does that mean she was following you? And what if she did? There's no reason to back off from a girl. And who are you to judge, anyhow? That's my business and not yours. All I'm trying to say is, don't be so punkin' headed about it. If you're so strung out about being honest, why don't you be honest with yourself for a change? Well, that does it. Well, cool off, Tom. Hey, you just take care of the logs. I'll take care of my women. I'm doing this for an opinionated, horn-handed, fly-by-night, backwoods carpenter is more than I can figure out. Oh, all the way to Shawneestown, long time ago. And when we ain't talking, you can almost hear the bells. Bells? Bells. Bells ringing out the glory. The glory of what? Of the world. Of the trees and the heavens. Mortal man with feet of clay. Gone tomorrow and here today. The glory of being alive. <laughs> hmm. 
here. I brought some of my biscuits. You want to try one? Don't mind if I do. There's fresh churned butter on it. And see? A square of bare bacon. I'm a good cook. Never said you wasn't. Never said nothing much, except your stories. Now, ain't you cooking? I can eat anything set before me. Then what? Well, it's, uh, it's it. Well, is, is it because I come to live here in Boonesboro? It ain't none of my business where you live. Who am I to sit in judgment on that? Then what is it? Well, if you must know, it's your giddy goose cap ways. Just a uh, brain wild and notional. Your yeah, head's full of dreams and legends and strange stories and philosophies. You get God knows where. Well, you have dreams. I have one dream, and it ain't like yours. And I, I don't hear bells on the riverbank or voices in the woods and, and reading books all the time. What kind of a woman is that to take to wife? To abide with? What are you? I'm a believer. Believer in what? I believe in, in babies and people and animals and fishes and flowers and houses and farms and in hunger and thirst and in life and eternity after life. And that's what I am. And that's the kind of wife I'm going to be. That ain't the kind of woman to mother my son. I want a practical boy who'll grow up to be a useful man. And I want a woman who can teach him that. With all the wild notions in your head, how could you teach him anything that'd be any good to him? Well, I could teach him. And more than just swinging an ax. No. No, you wouldn't be a fit mother. Well, then go. Go find yourself a mother fit enough for your son. And get off of my riverbank. It's robbery, that's what it was, robbery. Uh, and them's the ones that did it to me. Now, you're all in cahoots, the whole bunch of you. And you, you call yourself a judge, do you? Well, the curse of Michael Feeney be on you. And you, you big busybody, you're the one that did it to me. You framed me. You're, you're all in cahoots, the whole bunch of you. That's not as to you hear a fly buzzing. A fly? A fly buzzing? Well, I don't have to stand here and take your insult too, Mr. Boone. Fine bunch. Here's your hat, Mr. Gehagen. Me hat? Let's be on our way, Mr. Gehagen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm obliged for your help, Mr. Boone. Just told the truth. I'll, um, I'll get on your porch chair right away, Miss Boone. And I'll get back to the tavern. I need some firewood. Israel, you hadn't had your nose out of that book since the trial. Just a minute, Ma. This <laughs> minute, firewood. Yes, ma'am. Good day. Oh, fair. Israel finished his storybook? Well, he was about to when his cruel mother made him do his chores. Mr. Lincoln. Here's your uh, porch chair. Where would you like it? Put it right there and come on in. Well, how much do I owe you, Lincoln? Not a thing. Present for Miss Boone. Thank you very much. Tea? Coffee? Oh, no thanks. I, uh, I gotta be moving on. Oh, you must be getting ready to start your whiskey barrels. No, I'm... I'm passing that up. I... I'm on my way to New Orleans. New Orleans? How? Well, I'm going to go down to the Ohio and build me a broad oar and flat boat, float her to the big river, and then on to the French settlements. Want to go partners with me? Me? Partners? <laughs> I know you won't cheat me, none. Well, that's a fact, but 
No, there are too many people down that way to suit me. Well, we could sell a flat boat for the lumber in it and then come on home. And what if you can't sell the boat or get stove up in a wreck? Oh, I've lived on acorns and slept in the rain before. I reckon I can do it again. How about it? Well, uh... He'll do no such thing. He's going to stay right here in Kentucky. And that's what you should do, too. Take your Gahagan money and buy a farm. Build a cabin and settle down. Well, you got to have a wife to settle down, and I ain't got no wife. When are you leaving? Right away. Aren't you going to say goodbye to Nancy Hanks? No, I ain't. I don't care what I dream about. A man can't mess up his life on account of what he sees in his sleep. I ain't going to take her to wife, and that's final. All right, don't. If you don't want me on her riverbank, I'll stay off her riverbank. Uh... Take an awful lot of wood chopping to make one of those flatboats. Yeah, the more to sell, the better. The more lumber. Well, uh, you aim to do it with this thing. Well, that's as dull as butter paddle. Uh, that's, that's the only thing that frets me. I ain't found no place to sharpen it. Well, I might be able to help you. I know there's a mighty fine uh, rhinestone. Where? Come along and I'll show you. Wait a minute. What are you doing, playing tricks on me? This is where Nancy Hanks works. The grindstone's out and back. Come on, she won't see you. Howdy, Daniel. Nick. Tom Lincoln, Nick Burns. Hello, Mr. Lincoln. Howdy do. You want to sharpen your axe, do you? I'd be obliged. <laughs> My wife didn't want me to fetch this stone along, but it's made me friends with every man east of the Green River. They need some more water, Nancy. That's the helpingest girl I ever met. Never gets tuckered out. And she's got my kids lined up like a squad of Hessian soldiers. Every one of them doing a chore, and if they don't know how, she shows them. Even their ABCs. You know, I got me a hired girl and a school marm, both for the price of one, and she's a born teacher. Well, have at it. I got work to do. Turn for him, Nancy. Thank you, Dick. spots on it, neither. Wash my hands every time before I touched it. Well, it belongs to treat a book like that. But did you like it? Oh, yes. Wasn't it good? He lived on that island for 24 years, all by himself. Who? Robinson Crusoe. And when he saw the footprints in the sand, crime and Antley, wasn't that a dinger? Always gets me in the throat, that part. Did me, too. Well, who made the footprints? A savage, like a Shawnee, only darker. The cannibals were about to eat him. Robinson Crusoe saved him. It was on a Friday, so Robinson named him My Man Friday. A slave? No. It wasn't Robinson handy with his tools. I mean, the way he made his house and built his fort. Tools? That's in the book? It is. And wasn't old Robinson a good man, praying to God and cleaving to the promises in the Bible, keeping his faith, doing all the good he could, even when he was taming his goats. What else have you got, Nancy? What other books? Just my Bible. I didn't think you liked books. You changed me. I never knew they had so much good stuff in them. Well, then I'll give you back your fable book. It's got lots of good stuff in it. Only you'll have to think some to get it out. Could you do that? I can try. If you try, then you'll do it. Maybe there is something to get in some learning. Paul always says, times are changing, and a man has to get educated to get along in Kentucky. Your pa's right. Looks like you've taught him a valuable lesson, Nancy. I'm much obliged to you. If she could do that for your boy, she could 
Do it for her own. Couldn't she? Well, I don't know why not. Maybe even better as a mother. Yes. I don't think I ever said this before in my whole life. But I'm saying it now. I was wrong. I'm a pumpkin-headed, fly-by-night carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. And so was his father. There's a sad difference twixt me and Jesus. Jesus never got married. Neither did you. No, but I want to. I had a dream again last night. About the woman by the fireplace? She finally turned around. Did you see her face? Yes. Who was she? She was you. What? So will you, Nancy? Will I what? Will you do me the honor to be my wife and the mother of my son? Yes, I will. <laughs> and thank you for the offer. <laughs> you know, for a confirmed bachelor, you seem mighty anxious to get the knot tied. A long trip down the river to my brother's place. Well, be sure to tell Mordecai hello. I will. You can stop pacing, Tom. Here she comes. I said goodbye to everybody. Cincinnati just broke down and cried. I just wish you were having the wedding here. Oh, Tom wants his brother to stand up with him. Well, the canoe's all loaded. Your tools and stuff, and your basket and books are all wrapped in fawn skin. Thank you, Israel. Well. That's it, then. Let us know when you have a baby and if it's a boy or not. Oh, it'll be a boy, all right. Tom can teach him how to split rails, but there'll still be plenty of room left in his head for book notions, too, won't there? If you say so. And we'll name him after your father, Tom. I'd like that. Well, we better be going. Thank you, Becky, for no, everything. Tom. Thank you, Dad. God bless. Can I go see them all? Go ahead, son. Oh, boy, baby. Maybe he will rise to high places. Yeah, he might even be president someday. Well, I wouldn't go that far. What was Tom's father's name? Abraham. Hmm. Abraham Lincoln. 